So let's assume that you have a website that um, that you built with Kick PHP or Laravel or whatever Ruby on Rails, and um, you want your app to be fetching information from your website. This is how you do it. This is your Ionic app, and uh, you've created a user service. Now um, you have your HTTP there. Let's just say. Um, all you need to do on your app is to, on your, your kick PHP or your Laravel website is to output JSON to a certain URL. Okay. So your site is like uh, your site.com slash, um, we want, we want our app to, let's say we want our app to fetch lists of users. So you go to your site.com slash uh, list users. You created this all URL in your website then when someone visits this site they don't see html they don't see css they don't see php what they see is json outputs of lists of users for instance the output will be like um, um user one user two and so on so basically what you have to do is google how to using your favorite language how to output json with laravel or how to output json with cake php and so on and so forth once you get that you'll be able to output your results on your page so your page will be a white page with just json results i'll show you an example very soon so here is an example we'll use um, there is a website that does a very interesting service what they do is basically this website is just crazy what they do is basically give you a list of random they randomly generate users for dummy data so the website's url is um, randomuser.me slash api question mark results equal to then you enter the number of users you would like to see so let's just get one user first of all you hit enter and um, here is it the results of a user's profile so this is a dummy user profile I want to use it as an example so in your app in your website your website should output something like this to a certain URL so if somebody wanted to retrieve the uh, profile of a user from your app when your app visits makes a HTTP request to this URL from inside the app as you will see this is what the page should look like all right so um, let's just try and understand what is the results of course then you have um, gender male comma then name inside name you have title you have the title is mister you have first you have the name last of course then you have the location of the person the street address and stuff like that you understand even up till email okay so now you understand it. can we now generate like 10 users I'll put um, 10 here and hit enter guess what we have a list a json list of 10 users so all your app your pc app anything needs to do is to output json so that your your mobile app can read it now you know what this url does can we get back to coding all right so here inside your constructor outside your constructor let's create a function what do you call the function let me just call it load user so inside load user um let's give a random number let's just say number so that we can determine the number of users we want to fetch so this is the function that will do the fetching for us using http first of all let's create um let's declare this variable above your constructor private let's just call it data any data we want we are this this is the type so instead of string integer we just want it to be any okay and um, that's how you do it in typescript so um well first of all check if data there is data this data has some contents if there is data then just return return the promise result this data all right but then if the if there is no data what do we do we promise resolve 
and um, you put this arrow here then you open this guy here then so what we're going to use here now is the angular HTTP service remember that we it's called here automatically for us so private HTTP so we use this variable here and say HTTP dot get so we're making a call HTTP request to a URL so let's get back to that URL again so we copy the URL and back so we're making a HTTP request to this URL and uh, what is the number we should put here we just want it want it to be dynamic so we'll pass in the number when we call this function so let's just say plus number so when we call the function we will determine what the number will be all right so um, the next thing so now this automatically gets all those data we wanted we saw we just saw earlier on the screen but we need to map the data to a javascript object so we have this variable this is a random variable I just, I just defined you can call yours anything mine is rest or re short form for results you can call yours anything so we have rest.json so we're trying to get the, this is the whole json data and we're mapping it to uh, a javascript object and then we subscribe we subscribe data okay all right right here now we have our raw data this is what we can just do we save it in the data variable which is data dot results so we have a data dot result we we'll save it in the data variable finally we resolve the promise of so this data and there we are so what this basically does this is the, a sample code for um, getting requests from a, a JSON URL, a URL that returns JSON. So, and then finally, we've saved it into this um, data, into this um, this variable. What we'll do is to get to our page and use it. So, which page are we going to use it? Um, that's a problem. Okay, let's say home. Okay, well, on, on our login page, let's just say that we want to output the list of users on our login page. We'll come to our login.ts, then we import the service. You remember, this is a user service. We say import the user service. If you go to the user service, you see that it's exporting a class called users service. We we'll copy the class, control C, then that's what we are importing. We just paste it we're importing it from where from there's a folder called providers provider oops sorry um the folder is outside here have providers folder inside providers folder we are looking for a folder called user service inside a user service we have user ts uh, i hope you remember uh, remember the folder order where this file is located as you can see under the my cursor you can see where it is all right and um, now we've imported this service we're going to t tell our page to use it as a provider so we'll put a comma here and we'll say providers then we we'll use users we'll just use what we have here so if you have multiple providers you can add it like this but we don't have multiple providers all right so now we have it like this what we can do is um let's try and we need to have put a list of users right so let's declare the variable private or public anyone you want uh, private and public work just as well if you know the meaning of each all right so you have users and of course we might just need to use users list so we're just declaring variables we could we would be needing above your constructor now we've done that we can um, come right after the con constructor which is under it and say let us call load wait what's the name of this 
function load user um, let's just name this one and our list our users or <laughs> whatever okay so we say list our users very good so we are going to make reference to this user service and um, retrieve information what we're going to do is this dot user okay well, well, well i forgot we need to actually initiate it here so we say private um what do we call user service just declare a variable user service user service service and this plural this is small letter and then you put a colon and then you use the capital letter so this is a, you can you can name yours anything here but i just want it to be consistent that is why i use um, a similar name but then if you observe it you see that it has more letter and this is um, the one we're working with here all right which is the class name so here we can just say this dot um, users service basically we are just saying this guy here dot load user remember this load user we're now calling this guy load user remember we have to pass in a parameter number so that's what we're passing this guy gives us access to all the functions that you have here so this might just be to load user another man one might be to login user and so on and so forth you understand so this guy once we call this we can now have access to all the functions that we declared here or methods we declared there all right now we are loading user let's how many users do we want to load let's just say we want to load 10 guys and then then after loading there we have data then curly bracelets then this dot user list data so we save the data in a variable we call user list here's the variable okay users list so we just copy basically copy this variable and uh, paste it so this dot user list so save all the data in a variable that we call this dot users list which means if we go go to our this login page so let's get to the login.html where people see um under our button here let's just um let's just output users so we can just say um ion item ion list let's create a list of users then inside each list um let's just name this um list of letters latest users and then we can just say ion item okay so we have an ion item here inside this item we can have a label ion label okay the label will contain something and then we can have ion whatever okay so right here what we can do is um this is going to be a loop so this is a list and um this is going to be a loop so how do we do that we'll just basically say ng4 equals um let's just say user let user of users list remember this users list this is the users list guy here where is it this guy here this this dot users list that's the guy we're calling here we're saying okay and we're looping through and uh, we're saying basically and then automatically we have access to all the data we need so you use this double curly bracelets and um, for binding name not first give space I'm a lazy person i don't want to repeat it so name dot last 
and of course there is a picture somewhere let's see where the picture is so what we just did is name dot first name dot last so you can use this location dot street to get um a lot of other information okay so i just want to use this as an example and um and of course they have um they have picture picture dot large picture dot large that's the large picture and picture dot medium and picture dot thumbnail so we we might just be needing the thumbnail if you needed the picture of the user so that being settled can we go back to our page so this is how to do a, a loop in ionic on your html page so we get back to our page and um, oops it didn't work okay yeah i remember remember that we have um, right here right here in our login and um, outside our constructor we have created a function that retrieves list of users from the service or the provider but then we have not actually called this function so for us to call this function we can just say copy make sure constructor every code here in your constructor is what happens immediately the page loads once your page loads the only the code here runs then you will have to find a way to call all the other functions maybe by a button click or anything but one any code you put here will run immediately your page load so you just say copy and when you want to make a reference to other functions in your TypeScript, you just in you just say this you added this um, keyword there all right so we have this guy this list users okay so when we refresh right now um it's not working because we made a mistake and you didn't tell me that um right here is telling us in the console that we had a mistake in our typescript on line 22 and cannot find name any so if we get back to our code and check line 22 we'll see that we used equal sign instead of colon you understand and we did that because we are crazy so our page is reloading and guess what we have we have brian woods we have a list of users and how many are they they are 10 in number so you can add their image by saying for uh, photo dot uh, medium dot photo dot large according to what uh, according to the details they have here picture dot um, large picture dot medium and so on and so forth so thank you very much this tutorial is already long enough see you in the next tutorial i hope you learned something about http request in the next tutorial we'll get into making our login buttons work thank you see you in the next tutorial